Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Curat Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2006 movie titled Superman Returns. It is an action-adventure superhero film that runs for two hours and 54 minutes long. It is directed by Brian Singer, and it is produced by John Peters. The script was done by Michael Doherty and Dan Harris. The uh, story was done by Brian Singer, Michael Doherty, and Dan Harris. The score was done by John Ottman, even though the um, Superman theme was composed by John Williams. The cinematography was done by Newton Thomas Siegel, and it was directed by John Ottman and Elliot Graham. And the stars of the movie are Brandon Roth as Superman, Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane, Kevin Spacey as um, Lex Luthor, James Madsen as Richard White, who actually was seen in another singer production, The X-Men. He actually played Cyclops, but well, here he's now playing the nephew of the Daily Planet. Uh, Richard White. Frank Langella he is playing the role of um, Daily Planet uh, Editor-in-Chief Perry White. Eva Marie Saint Parker Posey as Kitty Kowalski, one of Lex Luthor's henchmen. Cal Penn is another henchman of Lex Luthor named Statford. Sam Huntington as uh, ace photojournalist Jimmy Olsen and Tristan Lake Lebu as the young Jason White. In all due sincerity, when I came into this to see this movie, Superman Returns in 2006, I had lowered expectations when coming to see it. After all, it stars a rather inexperienced performer who lacks the charisma and talent that Christopher Reeve possessed in the 70s and 80s Superman films. I also had the fear that Kevin Spacey was going to make a terrible stench of a performance as one of Superman's primary arch nemesis, Lex Luthor. But after seeing this almost three hour epic superhero action film, my expectations were only half of what I thought. Sure, Kevin Spacey was awful, but Brandon Routh was surprisingly very impressive as the Man of Steel. Sure, it's nowhere as charismatic as Reeve will ever be, but his subtle, restrainful performance and his commitment to stay true to the character and the story does serve a bit of an applaud. But this movie actually had quite a few problems as well, and what irked me the most was that Singer wanted everything crammed in from the comic book and only had very little time to do so. For starters, he wanted to maintain to the tradition of the classic comic book icon, but what ruined it was that Singer was following the continuation of the Christopher Reeves series of the 70s and 80s, which overall was pretty bad because its predecessors have toiled around it for years and had lacked in a lot of consistency. I was actually hoping that Singer would have picked an era and just kept to it instead of juggling, al juggling around with what he wanted to represent. Did he want to represent the comic strip or if he wanted to represent the adaptations? I mean, when you think about it, you just can't have it both ways. I, for one, in a biased perspective, believed that if by choosing to represent the adaptations of the 70s and 80s, he decided to arbitrarily give the background of the entire comic strip a warped and badly contrived backstory. Even if he went too far as to pay homage to the Christopher Reeve era Superman by remaining true to the crystalline planet of Krypton and adding imagery and a voiceover from Marlon Brando as Jor-El, who of course was Superman's father, Singer had an agenda to make the story his own and didn't care about 
what he wanted to represent, which in the end kind of left me unsatisfied. If he really wanted to do a makeover of the story, at least do it completely, not a halfway done effort. However, um, there is, of course, some positive things to this movie. Number one, the technical design was pretty impressive, as, uh, you know, the planet of Krypton was uh, pretty much what I expected to see. Um, it was actually quite pretty good that uh, Superman used uh, a lot of his um, tools to his trade in his arsenal, and... Uh, and even Brandon Routh physically looked and even hauntingly sounded just like the late great Christopher Reeve. And it was kind of hard to determine whether Brandon Routh actually does sound like Christopher Reeve or if he was just, you know, lip syncing through voiceover. Which could possibly be. I don't know what goes on, you know voiceover sounds and camera tricks are a pretty common trend in the movie industry so it's probably possibly that Brandon Routh may have just lip-synced his way through because he just sounds so freaking identical to Christopher Reeve I mean it did actually feel like the continuation from the Superman series in the 70s and 80s I mean, it even looked that way at times, too. The plot of the story is actually very intriguing. After a five-year absence from Earth, Superman, played by Brandon Routh, makes a comeback to Earth, only to discover that his love interest, Lois Lane, played by Kate Bosworth, is now engaged to Cyclops, I mean, uh, Richard White, played by James Marsden, who of course plays Cyclops in the X-Men series. She is now engaged to him, and uh, while in his absence, we discover that Lois has a five-year-old son. And there's a bit of a conflict between Richard and Clark Kent, as we don't know who the baby's father is. Maybe we should have uh, a cameo appearance by Mari Povich, but that's beside the point. Meanwhile, his arch nemesis, Lex Luthor, whose goal once again is for world domination, cliche, is still on his mind, and he wants to finally render Superman of his powers once and for all. And while this is happening, the Earth has kind of fallen aback by his absence, and now Superman has to face both new and old challenges in hopes to restore faith on Earth, justice against evil, and the determination to find out if he's the father to young Jason White. The epic battle between Superman and Lex Luthor is definitely the real highlight of the story. It captures the excitement and the suspense that has been featured over the years in the comic books and I think it all plays off rather impressively. I didn't care too much for the backstory of Clark Kent facing the trials and tribulations of his life, and I didn't really like it if he was playing off kind of a Pippi Le Pew stalker type role, as he keeps stalking Lois Lane, which at times kind of felt creepy. I mean, he had like these super uh, visionary specs, so he watches in on Lois with every move she makes. I actually kind of felt that was kind of disturbing and could even be borderline perverted. I mean, I don't know whether I should call him Clark Kent or Peeping Tom, but I, I, I just really find that to be very, very disturbing and very uncharacteristic of Superman, no matter what you, no matter what you think. Sadly, as much as aside from the much rather decent story comes one of the worst throwbacks in cinematic history and that is the god-awful portrayal of Lex Luthor in this movie I am just totally ashamed of Kevin Spacey here 
and you know I don't say that very often. His portrayal of Lex Luthor feels like he's just channeling in on the Joker from from the Batman movie played by Jack Nicholson. I mean, do all comic book villains have to repetitively laugh maniacally and act off the wall at times? And Spacey, of all people, should have known better. I mean, he can play creepy and evil, like his character Verbal Kint from The Usual Suspects or John Doe from Seven, while keeping his evilness in a, in a subtle fashion without being campy or goofy. Gene Hackman was also the same way too in the 1978 movie Batman. Hey, Superman, sorry. I mean, like I say, he's just playing off the Joker from the Batman movies. Sorry about that, folks. When will Hollywood ever learn? Lex Luthor is not a campy or funny individual. And, his qu and he didn't ask for a quest for world domination. His mind was supposed to be set on power, money, corruption, and greed. And wasn't there a time in the comic books when he actually at one time was running for president of the United States? I think Singer and company should w try to at least pick up a comic book, read about Superman, read about the modus operandi behind Lex Luthor's madness and then come up with an actor or who could perform Lex Luthor the way he is supposed to. Kevin Spacey actually was not a bad casting choice but it was just the way he was played out that made me feel like is this Lex Luthor? Or are we just channeling it on the Joker again? Rounding off the other casting choices was a little bit of a hit or a miss. For instance, I think Parker Posey is plummeting in her repertoire as Kitty Kowalski, who plays the role of Lex Luthor's nurse and a loyal follower. I think she would be better if she just stuck to the independent films where she truly excels. But the casting choices were actually overall not very bad. Brandon Routh is very convincing as Superman. Sure, he does not have the charisma that Christopher Reeve possesses, but still captures the essence of the comic book character very convincingly. Frank Langella was great as the editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet, Perry White. James Marsden was also played as Perry's nephew, Richard and serves as both a fiancé to Lois and a fig father figure to her son Jason. And Sam Huntington was also quite impressive as the young photojournalist Jimmy Olsen who has great admiration for Clark and Lois. And I think he even spawned into an action hero himself later on in uh, the comic book series. Didn't he go by the name Action Man? I think he actually did play Action Man in some comic book series too. And finally, let's not forget about Kate Bosworth as Lois Lane. Just like Katie Holmes was in Batman Begins, Bosworth also appears to be too young and not very convincing to play the part of a seasoned veteran ace reporter Lois Lane. She seems that at 23 years old to have been too young to even be in a serious relationship with Clark Kent. I mean, are you serious? If it would have been Angelina Jolie as Lois Lane or Catherine Zeta-Jones, then all right. But for a full-grown adult to have intercourse with a 17-year-old at the time and get her pregnant and then disappear for five years, not only does it nominate Clark Kent is father of the year, but he should have been convicted of statutory rape. Was he after her when she was writing for some ragtag newspaper in, in high school? I mean, what gives? 
If I was to give this rating out of 10, I would probably give this a 6. I mean, there was hit and misses in the casting choices. Uh, when will Hollywood ever realize that not all bad guys ha in comic book heroes in superhero films have to be knockoffs of the Joker? And, uh, you know, like I said, the production design was pretty good. So, um, you know, it's not a complete rant that I did here. I liked some of the features. There were some flaws to the story, but it turned out to be a good watch, even in its three-hour duration. Well, I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please write back to me. Subscribe to my channel. Remember, be kind, be courteous, and I will be back with another review. So until next time, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.